talking about why camera is important to the animation that you already have. Today we're going to be looking at the dolly zoom, or the Hitchcock zoom, or the zoom zoom. No, that's not it. Created by Alfred Hitchcock back in the early something something, you normally use this camera move in order to give a vertigo effect. What is the dolly zoom? Well, you've seen it in films nowadays. Bed it within the movie in order to enhance the character's performance, whether that be emotion, drama, stress, sense of unease. But Brad, what does this have to do with video games? I'm gonna tell you. Cleverly, video games and IGCs have been utilizing this technique into their games, which we don't actually know it when we see it the first time, but we feel it in game. This is used to bring our characters and the player closer to one another, a connection, if you will. Like every good recipe will add a lot of seasoning to your shot, whether it's in a quick cut or a very dramatic intro piece to your character. How to use that camera properly comes in handy inside the developer's market. So I'm gonna show you in Maya how to achieve that same effect using just a character and a camera. Here we go. So starting off, I have a simple animation of Lisa going from one pose to the next. In this particular case, she'll be facing towards the camera. All I'm using in the camera is the Z-plane, as well as the focal length. It's important to see what I'm doing through the camera as I'm starting this process. So now by checking the focal length and turning it down, I'm zooming out of the lens as I'm translating the camera forward. You're opening a wider area as we're getting closer to Lisa as I'm expanding on this example. Now as I got my focal length moving as far as I want it to go fairly, now I'm messing with the curves. In animation it's always important to be pushing the medium which separates us from the live action. We can actually manipulate it to our whim as far as timing and spacing goes. To get this effect to read properly, it should be a clear combination of the camera move as well as the focal length move. They both need to work together to add that desired effect. Now during this stage, I'm encountering a problem with Lisa. She starts to hitches a little bit before coming into frame. And that's what I'm trying to massage out. The camera animation plays as I want it to play. But of course, in space, Lisa starts to hit a small wall. Right around there, I'll start to add keys and mess with the focal length, ease in the knees out to massage that hitch. Then I start messing with my focal length trying to add more keyframes in into it and blend with a nice ease out. What I'm looking for is just a constant movement of Lisa coming forward with no hitches and no subtle blocks to make the transition smooth while the camera and its lens are doing the opposite effect. So I'm starting to play with the tangent as I'm finding another hitch as this one's being smoothed out. It's in a good spot to start adding some more ease out to the camera. I don't want it to come to a subtle stop. Give it a nice natural ease out to keep the camera breathing and alive. Now with that in place, I'm starting to go back to the ease in as I want the lens to actually start sooner when the camera makes a translation. Remember, it's all about combining the camera move with your character. The two combined together breathes life into your shot. Starting to feel pretty good. So with that, I want to take full advantage of this camera move and we'll scale it even sharper. We're not doing animation if we're not pushing the medium. The dolly zoom is there to enhance performance. 
Camera plus the character equals energy in your shot, a connection between the player and the character. I'm Brad Fischow, and that was your Anim Tip of the Day.